Welcome back to the News at 10. Now, we have some pictures that were sent in to us to our eyewitness portal. Let's share them with you. The first is this one from Oyo State, the Issei Shaki Road, where an overloaded truck is conveying people. Our eyewitness reporter wants the authorities to stop this act. Here's another one of a tricycle transporting a couch on the road in Zaria, Kaduna. Our eyewitness reporter is wondering when such practices will be stopped. And here's one of an accident along Matazu Road, also in Kaduna State. An eyewitness reporter calls on motorists to be more careful. Our last picture is that of a protesting resident, and that's resident doctors in Umahe, Abia State, demanding for better welfare. Our eyewitness reporter wants all stakeholders to dialogue. Thanks a lot for all your pictures and do keep them coming. As academic activities resume today in schools across Anambra State, teachers in the state have been assured of better welfare in terms of promotion, training and retraining, as well as better remuneration packages. This assurance is coming from the state governor, Willy Obiano, at the opening of a teacher's utility hall at the premises of the State Universal Basic Education Board building in Oka. The newly constructed teacher's utility hall catches one's attention once you enter the premises of the headquarters of the Anambra State Universal Basic Education Board. Governor Willie Obiano has come to commission the new edifice and he's received by excited teachers who are not only happy with the new structure but also because of his commitment to their welfare. Before now, the teachers held their conferences, seminars and trainings on the panel. We speak supervision and monitoring, prudent and judicial spending. We are proud to have this magnificent building to show for it. I am happy to announce that the purpose for which it was conceived and put in place are being met almost on a daily basis. We want to ensure that the learning is of all are met through equitable distribution of resources and the learning of lifelong skills and ensuring that we are one of the three top states with the lowest literacy rate. Governor Obiano insists government remains committed to meeting the needs of the teachers and citizens in the state. In the budget of 2017, I factored in promotion. All this are to motivate you because of the good work you are doing. Our children are doing well today because we have committed people working there. I want us to continue to be the best in education. I want our children to shine beyond uh, imagination. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Done with the commissioning, Governor Willie Obiano takes a tour of the teacher's utility hall. And some cheery news for small and medium-scale businesses in the country. And that's because the Bank of Industry is now extending loans to them through an all-inclusive program called Bottom of the Pyramid Scheme in partnership with leading microfinance banks. The idea is to leverage on the spread and penetration of these financial institutions in all parts of the country to stimulate economic activities at the grassroots. The Bank of Industry presented checks to some of the participating microfinance banks here in Lagos. The Bank of Industry calls it the bottom of the pyramid scheme. The program is aimed at unlending to microfinance banks in the country who are expected to in turn provide loans to millions of underbanked micro-entrepreneurs, particularly in the remote and rural areas. The acting MDC of Bank of Industry, Mr. Wahid Olagunju, explains why this initiative is imperative. It enables BOI to deepen its developmental and lending activities by utilizing the services of other tested financial service institutions to deliver credit to the underserved and underbanked at the bottom of the pyramid. The scheme will further enable BOI to achieve its core mandate of industrialization by providing finance for the economically active yet financially excluded micro-entrepreneurs. BOI has already disbursed 1.1 billion naira to 11 microfinance banks. 
Lapo Microfinance Bank, Fortis Microfinance Bank and Lotus Capital are here to receive their own checks. This brings the total amount disbursed under the scheme to 3.1 billion naira. The benefiting microfinance banks respond. We align completely with the BOI's objective, particularly that of financial inclusion. And I suppose the reason that we're part of this group is that Lotus Capital, um, the raison d'etre, a reason for being, is financial inclusion. We offer a unique and specific mechanism, alternative mechanism for providing finance to those who may ordinarily be excluded from the financial markets. I want to assure you that um, this partnership will be very successful. The success will be measured by the number of people that are uh, empowered. That bottom of the pyramid is always the widest part of the, of the structure and is the foundation on which the middle and the top, the apex, are built upon. And I think, uh, Mr. Languji, to, to your credit and to your team, that we have finally got it right. With loans to these microfinance institutions, the Bank of Industry is well on its way to further deepen financial inclusion in Nigeria. The President has approved the immediate removal and the replacement of the Executive Secretary of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Jim Mobaze, and the reconstitution of the Board of the Council. In a statement, President Muhammad Buhari also approved the appointment of Mr. Adedotun Sulaiman as the Chairman and Mr. Daniel Asakohai as the new Executive Secretary and Chairman of the new Council. Mr. Sulaiman, a chartered accountant, was a former managing partner director of Arthur Anderson and later Accenture, while Mr. Asakohai is a partner and a financial reporting specialist at the PricewaterhouseCoopers, Nigeria. Meanwhile, the federal government has also suspended the Corporate Governance Code, which led to the exit of Nigeria's Reverend Cleric, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, as the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God here in Nigeria. The decisions are coming two days after Pastor Adeboye's decision. In a statement signed by the media aide to the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Mrs. Constance Ikoku, the federal government explains that the law is suspended in order to make room for its review. The statement quoted the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Okechuku Inelama, saying that the government remains committed to restoring and enhancing market confidence and improving the ease of doing business in Nigeria. And talking about doing some business, let's hear from Emana Amawe. Many thanks for staying with us. Welcome to Business News. The Lagos State Governor, Mr. Kimu Miambode, has signed the 2017 budget into law. The ceremony, which took place at the Banquet Hall of the State House in Ikeja, was witnessed by members of the State Executive Council and the State House of Assembly. The budget, tagged the Golden Jubilee budget, still retains the size of 813 billion naira as earlier proposed to members of the Lagos State House of Assembly. The approved budget for 2017 is 812.998 billion naira. Our goal is to consolidate the most milestone recorded in the last 18 months and propel our state to a path of prosperity in line with our four pillars of development plan. Pillars of our state development plan are infrastructural development, economic development, social development and security, and sustainable environment. We are optimistic on the recovery of our national economy this year. We are encouraged by the budget performance of last year, which stood at 78%. Our total capital expenditure in 2017 will be 507.8 billion naira, while recurrent expenditure is limited at 305.18 billion naira. Our government is committed to prudent financial management and equitable allocation of resources for the general good, and will ensure proper fiscal in the implementation of this appropriation law. To successfully implement this budget, we need the cooperation and understanding of all taxpayers, civic obligations and duties of citizens, 
my tax payments have become noticeably better, self-induced, and encouraged. As we strive harder to improve service delivery in all sectors. Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kimomi Ambode, and the head of Nigeria's Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Minru Guozo, says regular inspection of the market operators has revealed that big firms on Broad Street have serious questions to answer. Mr. Guazo says the commission is stepping up oversight of systemically important market institutions with a view to protect the wider capital market. Discipline has improved significantly. Um, when we look at what the fractions in the market has been in the last five years or seven years, clearly shows us, uh, you know, there's a huge decline in terms of uh, um, infractions that have been committed. We, we also at SEC have also upscaled our both investigation and enforcement mechanism. Um, we have said it right from the beginning that anybody that crosses the red line um, will tell that person to get out of that red line, and whoever refuses to do that, you know, would have no option then. To take the necessary enforcement actions and we showed a very good example last year and even this year a few companies have been suspended from the market so i think everybody has taken the cue and the, that discipline has been instilled in the market the first part of channels television's exclusive interview with the head of the sec mr guazo will be on business morning tomorrow tuesday at 10 15 a.m now the local equities markets recorded its first back-to-back -back game this year that's the day after Friday's positive close, lifted by key stocks on the market. BC Adebayo has details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Reports. The Nigerian equities market ended Monday's session upbeat with an impressive 1.25% rise in the main index. Traders and analysts attribute the day's positive performance to activities from mostly financial and industrial bellwethers. The day's transactions also yielded a significant turnover of 219.02 million shares worth over 1.40 billion naira in 3,423 deals. Fidelity Bank, Access Bank and United Capital were the top of the activity chart in volume turnover. On the price table, United Capital and Fidelity Bank again reflected their lead in percentage difference ahead of 17 other advances. Meanwhile, the 16 stocks led by 7UP, Ashaka Cement and Cadbury recorded price losses. That ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adibayo. In the meantime, U.S. stocks opened mixed with the Nasdaq Composite touching a fresh all-time high. With more detail on what to watch this week in trade, let's join VOA Channel's TV business correspondent, Joel Malandrino, at the Nasdaq market site in New York. U.S. stocks opened mixed as the S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and Nasdaq Composite all touched record highs to kick off the first trading week of 2017. Now, the Dow came within 0.37 points of the key 20,000 level, and the S&P 500 and Nasdaq closed at all-time highs on Friday. Look at this right now. The Nas is just ticking a little bit higher than the all-time high, so we set another fresh record just this Monday morning. Oil prices were lower early on Monday, while bonds and gold prices edged higher. Now, the consumer is going to be in focus this week with reports on December retail sales and consumer and other consumer data, as well as November consumer credit. Several members of the Federal Reserve will be on the speaking circuit, including Chair Janet Yellen on Thursday at a town hall event with educators in Washington, D.C. Even though the headline number of the December employment report was a little bit disappointing, the details were strong, and that should keep the Fed on track for two to three rate hikes in 2017. From the NASDAQ market site in New York, I'm Jill Malandrino, and this is VOA Channels TV. And it's a mixed performance for stock markets in other parts of the globe as European equities closed lower today, with banking and all stocks leading the declines. Asian shares were higher. On the other hand, following the Dow Jones coming to hitting the 20,000 mark in last Friday's session. Let's see the figures. <laughs> And 
That's it on Business News tonight. I'm Emana Amawe. It's back to you, Joma. You first. First Bank. Next on the news at 10, World Football Governing Body FIFA set to vote on Gianni Infantino's plan to expand the World Cup to 48 teams. That's on sports. This is.